Hi guys, today we're taking a look at a TV backlight and this is the AmbiVision Pro. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So we'll be installing this on the back of my TV, setting it up, testing it out. But let's initially begin by briefly seeing what you get in the packaging. In the packaging, you get some accessories for cable management, four cable ties and four clips. Clips stick on directly onto the TV and the cable tie threads through there and ties up the cable. You get two power adapters, both are identical. Output on these are five volts, three amps. Cable length is 140 centimeters and a DC connector on each one. You get a controller, black gloss finish all the way around. You can see AmbiVision Pro written on there. And then you've got a camera on the top and then coming around the back, you've got a point where the DC power would go in. And this device is required to monitor the TV and this will assist in syncing up the colors with the LEDs. A big thank you to whokeys.com for sponsoring this video. So you get your new PC and you're looking for a Windows 10 key, the official Microsoft Windows 10 Pro will set you back at £219. So by choosing to get it from whokeys.com, you can still get an official Microsoft key. So to get this, simply click the buy it now and sign up to the whokeys.com website. Once you've signed up, hit the buy now and they've given me a special discount code. So if you type in GEE2, that will give you another 20% off this Price. So in this case, that will drop the price to just £10.99. Once you buy it, you get the code via their portal. And now coming over to my Windows 10 PC, you can see Windows is not activated. Click change product key and enter the product key provided by WhoKeys. Click next, activate Windows, and that's it, you're done. Windows is activated. Next, we have an LED strip controller, connector for your LEDs and power input goes in there. And finally, we've got the LED strip. So you get five meters here. The strip is cuttable. LEDs aren't waterproof on there. And if I pull this open, you can see all the cut points on there. There's two connection points on here. The black one is to connect to the LED strip controller and the white one is to connect to the other end of the LED. I'll be installing the LED strip kit on my console gaming setup over here. They say in the documentation, the distance from the wall to your TV should be at least three to 20 centimeters in distance. And for me, it comes in at around 19. So I've got an adjustable bracket here and I've put some wooden straps just to strengthen it further on this wall. So this is a plasterboard wall. Now I could have had it closer to the wall, but the reason for having a bracket like this is because I'm making a lot of videos, sometimes I need to easily get to the back of this. This is the ideal situation for my purpose. Installing the LED, they recommend starting at the bottom left corner and then working all the way around and coming back again. I've pulled the TV away from the wall. The LED LEDs have a sticky bit at the back, just peel this away. Starting at the corner here, let's place the LED strip in position. Work our way up. Now we've reached the corner area. The way to bend this, there's a couple of methods. The one I'm gonna try here is you wanna avoid where the actual LED is and anywhere there's soldered joints. So you just wanna do it on the point where there's a cut point. Now, where the cut point is, if we bend it like this, and come back on ourselves. There you go, a nice clean corner there. And we work along to the other side. At the next corner now, same thing again, bend away from us at 90 degrees and then bring it down. And again, a nice tidy corner. Simple again, just stick down this edge, fold in the corner. LEDs come across all the way now and I've got a cut point I can cut there. And what I've done, the original starting point, I've moved off this area and onto here as this is an LG OLED C1 and there's a slight gap here and it fits in quite nicely over here. Let me cut the excess LED. We can now connect up the end we cut off. So the connector block here, which is white, you can just open it from this point and prise your nails in and open it. Now, one imperative thing about this is you've got ground and five volts. The ground has to go to the black cable and the five volts goes to the red cable. So you see the five volts there, flip it over, slot it into position, and now we just lock it into place. Then I can stick this back on. Now with the fixtures you have with this, you literally just put the cable tie through and then your cables can go inside there and you just tie them. And this is what I've done here to keep everything very neat and tidy around this corner. We can now connect up the LED strip controller and that just clips into position and we'll have that running along here. So we can just peel off the plastic there, take it into position 
stick that on and then cable tie it. I've connected the power and the cable tie on this end. I haven't tightened it completely, only because if I need to disconnect it, I can quickly do it without having to cut the cable tie. And that's where we're at at the moment. Everything's attached on. Now the controller I've placed just in front of the TV unit. You can see it here. Distance for this, the maximum you can place it is five meters away. So in my scenario for testing, I'm just gonna keep it there. But at a later stage, I may move it over here to the side. It only comes in black, which is a bit of a shame. It would have been nice if it was white so it blends in to the walls in the room or even on my unit there, but not a big deal really. Let's turn this on for the first time now. What you see initially is an RGBW sequence. That means it starts to calculate the LEDs in the strip. Once that's completed, you'll see a white wave of animation go across. It's done that, so it looks like it's ready. When you first power up the controller, you'll notice a red light flashing in the corner. Now coming over to my Android phone, if I drop this down, let's have a look at Wi-Fi networks and you can see a hotspot's been created, AmbiVision Pro. If I click on that, the password is numbers one to eight sequentially. Internet may not be available, that's fine. Keep Wi-Fi connection. And then coming back from here, so going to the Play Store, the app we're after is AmbiVision Pro Wizard. Opening that up, this is what you're presented with. And it says you're connected to the AmbiVision access point. So now we need to get this device connecting to our Wi-Fi network. So if I click on settings, turn on settings, connection, and just need to enter in our Wi-Fi details, click save. Okay, let's come back now. And there you go, green tick there. And if I look on my Wi-Fi, it's connected back on my normal Wi-Fi. Now I've run through the setup of this and let me briefly show what's involved. So clicking on the three dots on the app, going to capturing, and initially you need to identify the corners of the screen. So clicking the first icon there, it attempts to identify the corners. If it doesn't do it correctly, you can maneuver the dots into position and you wanna to aim to get it into the corner of the screen, not on the frame of the TV. If the image you're seeing on the screen isn't up to date, then you can just click the refresh there. I find normally you gotta click that twice and then it updates. There you have it, they're all in position now. Next we've got screen orientation and that's dependent on where the control has been placed so for my situation it's 180 degrees but if I change it just to give you an example see the colors go all off let's change that back again below that you've got select your screen type and my TV is an OLED but you can use for LCD and a projector as well. And I'm surprised about a projector. I guess you can put it around the projector screen with this one. Now that's the basics of getting this going and very easy to do this part. Now the tricky part I'd say is the color calibration with this. So I've actually ended up contacting their support and getting them to assist me with that. And they've been very helpful with that. I've been sending them pictures, little video clips, and they've sort of assisted what I should have in there. Let me show some of the other options first. So LED strip, so you can see there, there's two points you can start the LED strip from. So I've started on the left lower corner, but you can start from the middle. Counts up the number of LEDs, so it's 116 on there. And the wall color as well, you can set that if it's not white. Back from here, next profiles, some details here. And speaking to the support person, this is the settings they recommended, and that's for user. Obviously, it's not gonna be the same for everyone. This is for my situation. And now going into advanced settings, LED strip, these are the settings they recommended for me. Now brightness wise, I thought have it all on maximum, but this is what they've suggested. Back from there and our colors. You notice the red on the screen, it isn't as strong. I thought you'd fiddle around with here, but they were saying just leave this as is and then coming onto camera. And these are some of the values they asked me to change on here. So interesting seeing this. And again, I think it's good showing you guys that. So if you're gonna be getting this, gives you a rough idea what you could try out initially. And in miscellaneous, this is what you have. So not simple to set up, I have to say, because obviously I've had to reach out to the support. Not often I have to reach out to the support guys to assist sometimes I have some questions but I've had to rely on them quite heavily to sort of set this up with the color calibration now I did have a go myself but nothing as near as what they've got there so what they've recommended is you can place it obviously in front of your tv which I have on my tv unit but they said it's probably better to place it on the opposite wall that way the camera gets a better view of the tv and can give a better representation of the colors so I'm going to try that later on but for now let me show you some of the options you have in here so first of all you 
you can turn this off in position. So clicking that button, give it a moment and the lights turn off as you can see. Clicking it again, turns on. Then you've got brightness levels. You can take it right down. So if you were finding it too bright, can make adjustments. I'll keep it on maximum, obviously for the camera. It'd be good for you to see. Now below that, you've got the different modes, intelligent, smooth, fast, average and user. So with a user one, it can be customized. Then you've got mood. So you've got some basic ones set up already. If I click on manual, you can pick a static color and go with that. So it's quite nice. Color wheel appears. You can just flip over to that. Fireplace gives a fireplace effect on there. Rainbow, you can see the colors. So obviously these options aren't working in conjunction with the camera. These are set ones. So next we've got nature and then relax. And then moving on, we've got music. There's music sync options with this as well. So as I'm talking, it's picking up my voice and trying to move the lights accordingly. Not too bad, really. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three, test one, two, three. Seems fine, to be honest, not too bad at all. And that's it, that's all the basic options you have on this. Now let's test this out playing a video on YouTube. So this is from our travels channel and immediately you can see all the colors transitioning and performance isn't bad at all. There is a very subtle lag to it. And obviously that's because there's a camera there. It's trying to pick up the picture and trying to replicate the colors the best it can. Now, looking around the picture at the moment, quite interesting to see. Obviously you've got some areas appearing colorful, even at the sides, you're not seeing as much. And that's to do with some of the configuration settings in there. So there's a setting you can say for eye strain and dead zone and where it's at a certain level, you won't get a light coming on, obviously, just part of the settings with this. Let's move on with this one. So walking along in here now, it's gonna get a bit more colorful and you can see it kick in straight away. And there you go. You see the reds coming on, on the left-hand side, then the yellows. And it's transitioning pretty well, as you can see. And like I say, the lag time is very subtle with this works pretty well how it is, quite smooth, how it transitions between the colors. And really the effects you have off this when you're watching a movie is quite impressive because the ambient light you're getting off there, not like a standard LED where it's just a static color or it's just random colors coming on the screen. With it replicating, it gives a more of an immersive feel, a bit like the Philips Hue product and even the Govi products with this. But the advantage of this is, obviously you're not connecting another intermediate source into the device. It actually is working directly off the camera and trying to pick up the colors on there. Trying out some gaming on the next gen gaming consoles and it looks great. Gives a real immersive feel. Accuracy isn't bad either, but you can notice when there's a sudden change in color. And this is due to the time it takes the camera to process the color change. But in general, I think it works great. Now what I've done, I've moved the camera from the TV unit and placed it at the back of the room, just over there in the corner. And I've just attached it with these 3M command strips. Now with the controller in a different position, obviously the camera's on there. I reached out to their support again. And the only thing they really recommended me to change on the app was the auto camera gain range. So I just took that value down. So it's between five and 90 now. And you can see the results themselves. I think it's working well with this. With the camera moved to the back, you can see for yourself, it looks absolutely stunning. Nothing in the way, nothing in eye shot. So nice, clean setup on here. But the thing to be aware of, obviously the controller has a camera on there. So if you walk in front of it or you block out its range, nothing's gonna appear on there. So you see there now, I'm blocking it out. It's completely blocked out. I'll stand a bit to the side and it's come back. So if you're gonna do it, probably best to put it into a corner of a room so it's out of the way where people aren't gonna be walking past or standing in front of it. Now playing the same travels footage again, streaming off YouTube. You see the color transition is really good. Again, the lag's gonna be similar, very subtle lag on there. You can see it transitioning. So very similar in quality. We'll let it run just for a moment, just so you can see for yourself. And now the colors will start kicking in on the screen. And there you go. Love it, looks great, really does. Trying out gaming again, but this time with the camera at the back. And I'd say the results are similar as before with it being on the TV unit. And there's no major difference there. 
So in summary, I'm really impressed with the AmbiVision Pro, much better than having just a basic TV LED kit around your TV, as it gives a great immersive feel when you're watching a movie or even gaming. Price-wise, it's cheaper than the Philips Hue sync box, and there's no pass-through unit. So with the Philips Hue sync box, you have to plug your console or satellite receiver directly into it, and it caps the refresh rate to 60 frames per second. So if you had one of the next-gen gaming consoles together with a TV that supports 4K at 120 frames per second is going to limit that refresh rate but with the ambivision pro it uses a camera and doesn't restrict the signal going to your tv in any way it can support tvs or even projectors up to 120 inches in size negatives wise on fast action you will notice a lag on the colors as a camera has to process screen activity and it's a shame you can't plug the leds into a usb port on the back of your tv as it does require a socket to power it and price wise it's much more expensive than a basic tv led strip at 195 pounds for a kit that supports TVs up to 64 inches and 229 pounds for TVs up to 120 inches. So there you have it. You made it to an end of another video and I really hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this LED kit and smash that like button as it tells YouTube's algorithm that this is a good video and pushes it to a wider audience. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.